I want to show you now why we have to add 180 degrees to our answer for inverse tangent if your x component is negative. And it's pretty easy to understand, actually. So let me show you an xy plane. So here's y, and here's x. Now let's say a position it looks like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Let's say the object was up here. And um, so I've given you the position vector of this object in rectangular coordinates, haven't I? That is vector r is equal to four meters in the x direction and three meters in the y direction. Well, what if I want to express vector r in terms of polar coordinates? Well, the magnitude is easy. r is equal to the square root of four meters squared, that is the x component squared, plus the y component squared. And of course, all physics teachers and math teachers like to use three and four because what do you get? You get 5, right? Because what's 4 squared? 16 plus 3 squared, 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5, 5 meters. And we can calculate the angle. Theta equals the inverse tangent of the y value, which is 3 meters, over the x value, which is 4 meters. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get, well, let's see, what do we get? Oh, where's my calculator? Let's see, I'm going to say uh, inverse tangent, oops, wrong one, inverse tangent of 3 divided by 4. I hit enter, and I get 36.9 degrees. OK? So follow along. Put that in your calculator. Make sure that's what you get. But what if I was down here in the, now remember, this is called the first quadrant. And then over here is the second quadrant. This is the third, and this is the fourth quadrant. What if my object was in the fourth quadrant? So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. What if it was down here instead? Well, I think you can see that even now your x, your x quantity is still positive. But your y quantity is negative. But what happens when you use Pythagorean theorem? What, ha what is negative 3 times negative 3? It's, it's still positive 9. Negative times a negative is a positive. And so you still have 16 plus 9. You still have the square root of 25, which is still 5 meters. So this is still 5 meters long, like it was up here. But now let's use inverse tangent. And if you say, OK, well, y is negative 3 meters, and x is positive 4 meters, and when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get negative 36.9 degrees. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Because look, look, this rotates positive. And we said that, or, clock, or counterclockwise, we said if we rotate from the x-axis like this, it's a positive angle, but if we rotate down like this, it's a negative angle. And your calculator knows that. The algorithm in your calculator knows that. So it gives you this angle. What if you wanted to express it as a positive angle? What would you have to do? Well, you could express it like this, like that. You could add 360 degrees to this. You can go negative 36.9 and then add 360 degrees, and you'll get, you know, a positive angle, but this is good. You can use this negative 36.9 degrees is good enough. 
Now, let's go to the second quadrant over here. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And I, if I come up here, there's my position. And x is negative 4, but it gets squared. So negative 4 squared is 16, plus 3 squared is 9. You get 25 squared of 25 is still 5. So it's still 5 meters. But let's use inverse tangent. And, and, and really pay attention to this part. This is the part we're really trying to emphasize here. The inverse tangent of the y value, which is 3 meters over negative 4 meters. Notice that our x value is negative now. When you do that, you get negative 36.9 degrees. But that's the wrong answer. That's not, that's not where that object is. It's five meters away, but not at negative 36. Where is it? I'd go negative 36.9 degrees, but where is it compared to this? Compared to this, it is in the opposite direction, which is 180 degrees away. So what you need to do to get to this angle right here is add 180 degrees to your answer. So theta is negative 36.9 plus 180 degrees. It's 143 degrees, 143.1 degrees from the positive x-axis. And this is your angle. Your calculate now now look, take a look at this. Why, why did this happen? Here we have 3 divided by negative 4. But over here, we have negative 3 divided by 4. It's the same answer. 3 divided by negative 4 is negative 0.75. This is negative 0.75 down here. Your calculator is not smart enough to know the difference between the fourth quadrant and the second quadrant. You have to be smarter than your calculator. Let's take a look at the fourth quadrant. Well, if you're down here, you're still five meters away from the origin, but what angle? What angle is this? Well, you're going to ha have the inverse tangent of negative 3 meters over negative 4 meters. Well, what's negative 3 divided by negative 4? It's negative 0.7, I mean positive 0.75. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And your calculator is going to think you're in the first quadrant. So when you plug this in your calculator, you get 36.9 degrees, but that's not where you are. Here's 36.9 degrees up here. What do I have to add to it to get to where I really am? 180. So look, in both, on, on the left side, quadrant 2 and 3, your x component is negative. And on both of these, I had to add 180 degrees to get to the right angle, or the correct angle. So that's why we say this. To find the angle using inverse tangent, it's the y component divided by the x component. And then you look at your x component. If it's negative, you add 180 degrees if negative rx. So that's what you have to know in order to convert from rectangular to polar coordinates. If you want that angle, if I give you the y and the x, you have to use, if the x is negative, you have to add 180 degrees to your answer.